How's it going, folks? Thank you for stopping by my channel. Today, we're going to talk about cannabis, CBD, THC. What did I do for ADHD? We're going to talk about the pros and the cons, a little bit of anecdotal evidence, some research, and we're going to see what's up. There's quite a bit to cover, but I urge you to go and do your own research, too. But this is the research I've come up with, and I have seen thus far. So before we get started, I want to reiterate that this video is not a pro or against video for any of these things mentioned. That is truly up to you, the viewer, to decide. The options are out there, the research is out there, and I recommend that you be logical and realistic about this, whatever decision you decide to do. Because with, like with supplements, there is a lot of help, and sometimes there's some pros and there's some cons too, and obviously with great power comes great responsibility. How much we take of something, the discipline levels we have, the different types of ADHD or neurochemistry, all that comes into fruition. Meaning we have to take all of that into consideration, because they're all really important factors. So. The video is just meant to inform, so do as thou will, and go forth. Educate yourself. So, let's cover a couple of terms, let's have some fun. First thing to cover here, CBD. Now, what is CBD? Cannabidiol oil, most often referred to as CBD oil, is a product of the marijuana plant. The plant family is called cannabis, and cannabis products can include CBD oil, along with smoked, vaped, or eaten products. CBD oil is just one of the more CBD oil is just one of more than 85 compounds in cannabis and is regarded by some enthusiasts as having medicinal benefits. Now, it is not THC. Tetrahydrocannabinol the compound in cannabis that creates euphoria and delivers the high of marijuana use. So yet again, to reiterate, THC is the compound in cannabis <laughs> that gets you stoned, for those of you who don't get it. So, CBD oil does not do that. CBD oil is not supposed to contain any THC, meaning the oil needs to be highly refined to make it suitable for use, and therefore is not a natural product. One reoccurring concern, however, is that some products on the market have trace amounts of THC present, making them unsuitable for use by children and teens and by any adult concerned about possible addiction. Let's go into a little, a little neurochemistry, a little biology, if you will. How does CBD work? Well, when you consume CBD oil, the compounds engage with two receptors in your body. These receptors, known as cannabinoid receptor, type 1, CB1, and type 2, CB2, have a direct effect on specific parts of your body. So, CB1 is more abundant in the brain and is directly related to epilepsy. CB2 is more abundant in the immune system. It's connected to pain and inflammation. The compounds from CBD appear to trigger your body to use more of the cannabinoids it produces naturally. Interestingly enough, our body has tons of C different sorts of CBD receptors of the ones we just mentioned. Going to show you that through human history, there was a consumption of sorts with CBD. Interestingly enough, we have, as humans, different THC receptors throughout the body as well, research has shown. Showing how our ancestors probably consumed this in one way or another. So, next point, the the uptick in the use of naturally occurring cannabinoids may lead to a number of benefits, including decreased anxiety and reduced hyperactivity. Anxiety and hyperactivity are really common components of having ADHD. 
Let's talk about some of the side effects of CBD. CBD has been shown to be well tolerated at doses of up to 1500 milligrams per day. Due to a number of factors, it can take anywhere from 20 minutes to 2 hours before you feel its effects. The side effects of CBD may include upset stomach, drowsiness, or changes in appetite or weight. In one study, CBD-rich cannabis extract was shown to increase the risk of liver toxicity in mice. However, the mice in the study received large doses of CBD. Now, for those of you who don't know, in science and psychology, we've been testing stuff on rats for years due to the similar implications rats have to human beings. So, going along, CBD may interact with a number of different supplements, prescription medications, or over-the-counter drugs. Next point, CBD, like grapefruit, also interferes with enzymes that are vital to drug metabolism. Before you use CBD, check to see if any of your supplements or medications come with a grapefruit warning. Interesting to know. CBD and CBD oil may be available without a prescription in locations where they're legally available. And in the U.S., a lot of states have legalized the use of cannabis and of CBD. So, for those of you in the area, or if you live in the state or city where it's legal, all you have to do is go to a local dispensary. And most of the time, you have to be 21 years or older in order to get your product. You no longer have to go on the street and talk to, uh, yeah, the guy on deck, if you will, or the local drug dealer in order to get your cannabis supplies or, C or CBD in, in this case. So now you can go to a dispensary. Some of them even look like an Apple store. You'd be surprised how, how, how far they've come. So, so interesting to know that there seems to be a bit of mention of a lot of calmness and reduction in the hyperactivity, both on the outside and both within, meaning that the body seems to relax, or CBD oil helps the body relax, and it also helps fast intrusive thoughts of those of us who have difficulty with that. So interesting to know, if we look at the research, CBD oil it's fairly new, meaning it hasn't really been in the record books or allowed to be of use for a long time. So a lot of the research that I found doesn't really say much about it. There is certainty in studies when it comes to epilepsy and anxiety, meaning that CBD oil is helpful for both um, epilepsy and anxiety, but not much research when it comes to ADHD. So from what I've noticed from looking around forums and researching in other areas is that CBD oil helps out with lowering levels of anxiety in individuals with ADHD. It also helps stop the intrusive reoccurring thoughts that can happen and can that can sometimes make some of us have difficulty thinking and making decisions. I'm sure a lot of people watching with ADHD sometimes get ideas in their head that are not logical. And it kind of gives us anxiety because we just can't get out of that thought loop. Well, CBD oil seems to slow down that process and seems to help both the body and the brain relax. So while the research might not yet indicate, and it's not because the research has been done and it just says, okay, there's no evidence for help for ADHD. No, it's just that the research hasn't been done. Now, granted, for supplements and different sorts of supplement usage for ADHD, there's a lot of studies on that that haven't fully been done too. It takes a long time. You have to go through a lot of bureaucratic red tape, unfortunately, to get studies done and get them approved in scientific journals. And at the same time, you're going up against Big Pharma. Big Pharma don't want you guys taking supplements all the time when they have a bit pricey of a medication option for you. So my ideal is you can balance both of them out, you know? The medication is helpful for sure, but supplements can also be quite helpful as well. And CBD can also be quite helpful as well. Now, one of the inspirations for this video is that I myself started taking CBD oil and noticed quite a bit of difference, a substantial amount of difference. But I also noticed some very unique things that I wanted to talk about here that not too many people talk about that I've noticed in myself and in what I've found out for a uh, from a couple other people that have told me. So before we move forward, I want to talk about 
what the benefits of CBD have been for me since I started taking it. Now, it the benefits are quite good. I really, I really do like and appreciate the benefits that CBD CBD oil have had with me. And I've also spoken to quite a bit of other people with ADHD that have told me similar similar traits and similar um, benefits that they have acquired from CBD oil as well. So I wanted to share with you guys some of the points that I wrote down of how CBD oil has helped me out. So let's go over them. Benefits I've noticed from taking CBD oil. Number one, a large increase in tranquility and a feeling of peace, connection, and empathy. Now, this is interesting to know because I've researched some of the neurochemistry of CBD and realized that there is a, interestingly enough, an effect on acetylcholine in a different sort of way that I potentially realized. Now, what's interesting about taking CBD oil is that one part of the part of the brain or part of the thought processing of ADHD, some of us can get really tense or upset. And it doesn't take much to get there. That has to do with a different theory of ADHD, of us needing to kind of be on edge whenever danger was uh, perceived back in our nomadic hunter and gatherer days, if you believe the hunter and gatherer theory of ADHD, which I so happen to believe. So I noticed a big calming of the mind, a big sense of just ease. I never realized how uncomfortable my body was physically and how that can create a lot of apprehension in thought processing and in thinking so i've noticed that with cbd there is an inner calm there's also a bigger sense of empathy and connection that i have not really felt that strong since i was a little kid perhaps dictating that cbd levels in the brain when one is younger can perhaps be a bit higher and they just drop when one goes through puberty or different neurochemistry alterations occur. So a very inner calm and a sense of connectedness. Very interesting to know. Point two, it's easier for me to move from task to task. So I can stop doing what I'm doing and move on to something else with a lot more ease than I could have before. This was something that was very difficult for me before. I couldn't easily move from doing one thing and then going and doing another because it, the brain feels, or at least my brain felt like, oh, all right, I have to pump myself up. I have to put myself in a different framework, a different frame of mind. And that took some time. Sometimes it takes minutes. Sometimes, sometimes it takes hours. But I've noticed with CBD oil, it's such an easier thing to do. Point three, it is easier to immediately stop doing a task, something I had difficulty with prior. So also with transitioning from task to task, I can also just stop doing something that I'm working on and not feel that negative, horrible feeling of, oh, I can't stop. It's just, it's going to feel very negative. I'm not going to feel good. It's a lot easier to just stop and collect my thoughts and then, yeah, go on to whatever I need to go on to next. So that's a really helpful benefit of taking CBD oil for myself that I've noticed. Point four, I can feel and estimate time better. So that's something else that's interesting to know is I feel like I can quantify time and feel the duration of time. Whereas before I would just lose track completely that time even existed, which is very common with ADHD, which is why it's advised to get an analog clock with hands and numbers so you can see it and get better at estimating and feeling time. So I really feel like CBD oil enhances that and really helps with that perception of time so I can keep myself on check more. Point five, I am able to complete tasks quicker due to less body pain and more organized thought flow. I never realized how important the body being relaxed is. Now I've spoken about taking collagen and multiple other supplements in order to help out your body your bones, your cartilage, and everything else. But it's interesting to note that with taking CBD oil, it's really easy to relax the body, which also relaxes the mind. This lowers the anxiety. This lowers the tension. So because of this, I'm able to complete tasks quicker. Because before, I would choose to do 
steps in the task that were based off which one felt less pain or which one was going to be the most stimulating. It's interesting now because I can change that hierarchy. I can start doing the uncomfortable thing first in the task and then move along to whatever needs to come up next. I can do stuff in order, whereas before I would have to rearrange the order of a task and kind of organize it or number it depending on what my body or mind can handle. Now with CBD oil, I've noticed a sense of ease of the body and ease of the mind, meaning that the mind is not as anxious, there's not as many thoughts coming through. At 100 miles an hour, I'm able to think a bit more organized and clearly, and I feel better. So it makes completing stuff a lot better. And I can feel time while I'm doing this activity, and then it can help me estimate how much time it's gonna take me to do another activity, or the same activity at another point. So I think that's rather helpful. Number six, skin has smoothened and tightened around the muscles. So I've noticed that after taking CBD oil, I am on the keto diet. I've been on the diet since 2018. I tried the diet back when I was in my mid early twenties in 2014. And I tried it again two years ago and it was really helpful. I really do think the keto diet with certain adjustments and help from certain supplements is really good for people who have ADHD. It just takes some discipline, it takes some time. So anyway, I've noticed that CBD oil really helps smoothen up the skin and it really helps tighten the skin around the muscles in the body. I'm sure some of you have noticed when you don't get enough sleep or when you get less than eight, seven, or six hours of sleep sometimes, that you look a bit perhaps more overweight or there's more of a flap to the stomach or your skin it kind of hangs more than on days when you sleep better this is due to multiple reasons but i've noticed with cbd oil that it helps out with that it really helps to kind of keep the body looking a bit more lean and the skin to kind of tighten around the muscles and the joints a bit more so that's been something that's been a really big benefit to me due to my busy schedule and sometimes I cannot get as much sleep as I would like so I feel that's a really added perk and benefit. CBD oil seems to be really good for the skin. Uh, point number seven, when I jog my stamina and endurance is greatly increased. So I've noticed that interestingly enough when I jog my respiratory system is highly improved. I've had trouble breathing from both nostrils for a certain portion of my life and I've noticed that with CBD oil as well with everything else I take particularly in this case with CBD oil that I can breathe from both nostrils equally and when I run it doesn't feel like my lungs get clogged immediately my stamina is a lot better meaning I can breathe and I can breathe at a very calm you know relaxing pace running longer distances whereas before i would have difficulty with this a little bit so, so it's definitely helped me breathe a lot better and it helps out with jogging and running this is something i've noticed uh with other people with adhd that running can be a little difficult and that getting out of breath quick is often even if they work out a bit so i've noticed with cbd oil it's a lot easier to breathe which makes my stamina when i run and jog a lot better so really helpful point number eight my breathing has improved and I'm able to breathe fully from my nose. So as I said before in point number seven, yeah, not only when I jog, but just in general, like it's easier to just breathe and it feels really smooth. The sense of smell has also increased because of this. So really helpful in a respiratory sense. So I'm really glad that CBD oil um, seems to show that benefit. So as I mentioned before, CBD oil is not going to get you, your son, your weird uncle, or anybody else stoned or high. It's just a type of oil from the cannabis plant that's extracted that helps out with your CB1 and CB2 receptors. They have to do both with the body and with the brain. And it seems to be helpful for a number of ADHD symptoms. Now, the research is still in its infancy. A lot of it still hasn't been done. So... 
hopefully for the next couple of years we'll see some more studies done on CBD oil and ADHD because it seems to be of benefit for a lot of people but at the same time it has its drawbacks. So before, before we close up the CBD section, I want to talk about how for me it's interesting because I can't take too much CBD oil. Because what happens since I have inattentive ADHD is that I'm not sure what exactly occurs, but there's um, an issue with the reward system. I feel that due to my lower amount of dopamine and serotonin, there's a big sense of melancholy that comes in if too much uh, CBD is consumed. Now, this could potentially be because the reward system in the brain is affected. Now, there's some other things that occur neurochemistry-wise. I'm going to leave a link down below from NCBI for those of you who want to check that out. But I only take a little, tiny little drop of CBD oil in my butter coffee. Now, this butter coffee I take when I get up, it includes um, just straight up organic healthy coffee. And then I throw in MCT oil, MCT oil from the vital part of the coconut, really good for the brain and for thinking and fluidity and energy and focus. And I put in also some Kerrygold butter. The brain is 70% fats, so the fats from Kerrygold unsalted butter, really beneficial if you're on the keto diet. And I also throw in some collagen in there as well, collagen powder. So, and when that's done and mixed up, I throw a tiny little droplet, less than 0 0.25 milligrams. It's literally like a little speck because I can't take anymore. I tried taking the lowest dosage from the dropper that I got. It's right here from a company called Lazarus Naturals. Just a little bit of that drop is all I need and everything of those benefits I spoke to, about, spoke to you about earlier, that's what happens. So I take that twice a day, take that at lunch, and I take that sometime later on after six or seven hours uh, around dinner or after dinner. So it's really beneficial. And if I take any more of that, it, it doesn't do me good. Now, granted, some people are going to need a bit more. Some people are going to need a lot more. It depends on who you are and your neuro neurochemistry. Make sure to always speak to your healthcare provider before trying any supplement or before trying CBD oil. Just to make sure it doesn't uh, cross-contaminate with any sort of supplement or medication. So, I've been taking the CBD oil with the supplements and with the medication and it seems to complement it well. I haven't noticed any issues of any sort. The only thing I've noticed is a bit more um, anxiousness and a bit more feeling of melancholy if I take too much CBD oil. But if I take that minuscule amount that I take, it, it really does, does what I need it to do. So some of you might need more, some of you might need less. It all depends on the neurochemistry of the person. Now, other people have told me that when they take too much CBD oil, it makes them anxious. So, I want to urge you to start at the lowest possible dosage. A little drop might be all you need, and you might need a little bit more. Depends on the person. But remember to start low and to speak to your healthcare provider before trying it out. And you should be good to go. So, once again, uh, CBD oil can be purchased online now in the majority of places and can also be purchased at your local dispensary if the state of which you are in here in the U.S., um, if it's legal. So, and if you're going to get CBD oil, I'd recommend an organic trusted source of CBD oil. Look at the information of the company, how they extract it and the methods of which they use. Now, I take mine from a, an organic company called Lazarus Naturals. That's from the state of Oregon, I believe. And I read up on their history. I like their practices and I like their products. So this is what I got and I would recommend it to you too. This little thing right here was uh, something for me to try out. It only cost 12 bucks. So they sell one that's like three times the size it is for about 30 if you don't want to get one that's that small but i didn't know if it was going to work good so i don't want to get a giant bottle of cbd oil and have it not work so i got just this little one right here and yeah i'm for sure going to be getting more once this runs out just because it's really helpful so yet again the company's called lazarus naturals if you want to check them out good company good practices good stuff Moving along, now let's talk about cannabis itself for ADHD. Now, this is going to include THC, so there's a potential to get stoned high, if you will. So, you got to be careful. 
like I said before, with great power comes great responsibility. And there's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of pros and cons. There's a lot of controversy considering the history of can cannabis here in the U.S. and in some other countries as well. So thankfully, research has been done. And we've seen that a lot of the hysteria and whatnot over the years was perhaps a bit bigger than was previously anticipated. So nonetheless, there still, still are quite a bit of cons and negative aspects of taking uh, cannabis, especially if you take a certain kind or too much, that's not going to be good for you. There's so many different types of strains to cannabis. So for those of us, for some of us who are not as informed, this might be helpful. And for the recreational user or for the classic stoner or those who consume or who have been consuming for years, this is going to be a bit of the basics, but we're going to go through Cannabis 101 and we're going to be talking about ADHD ramifications. Cannabis for ADHD. Let's talk about the benefits first. First point, being able to focus slash have sustained attention for longer periods of time. Now, a lot of people with ADHD um, that use cannabis say that the increase in the reward system and in the neurochemistry with certain strains that they take helps them focus and helps them be able to complete tasks and have the attention for a longer period of time. So this doesn't work with all strains. As we'll see later on, there's certain strains, types of cannabis, that are more helpful for that. And there's other strains that are going to do the exact opposite. We're not, not going to be able to focus at all or a lot less. So going on, going on to the next point, helps with completing tasks that take long durations of time to complete. Now, this is a common ADHD issue that we don't have the uh, mental or neurochemistry reward system stamina in order to complete tasks that take a long time. So we spread them out throughout the day, throughout the months, and unfortunately sometimes throughout the years, even though sometimes it can take us just a few hours to do, so we kind of hold it back. But certain people have said that with ADHD that uh, consuming cannabis through the different forms of consuming it that this is helpful for them so going on to the next point reducing slash eliminating anxiety can cause more anxiety when too much or certain strain strains are consumed so that is correct that there are certain strains of cannabis that can help reduce and uh, rather even eliminate anxiety and this can be helpful for a lot of us who have really intrusive thoughts and our body is tense and our mind is constantly um, coming up with scenarios of how stuff can just go into a catastrophe and we can just get screwed. And that's not always the case. Sometimes it's just the ADHD mind uh, playing tricks on the individual. So next point, uh, cannabis helps relax the body and reduce hyperactivity. There's certain strains that help mellow out and relax the body that ironically enough also contain uh, CBD in them as well. And yes, the hyperactivity can also be diminished to a great capacity. So we look at the next point. Cannabis also helps with body aches and pain. There's uh, many people I've seen in forums that talk about having chronic pain from injuries, uh, from whatever else, if you will. And they use cannabis in order to help those ailments because the pain medication that they're taking causes them a lot of anxiety or a lot of uh, negative side effects that they don't want. And sometimes they can't take that medication due to the ADHD medication that they're taking because it's just not helpful to take them. So cannabis uh, is, their, is their drug of choice in that case and really helps them out with that pain. So it can definitely help out some people with ADHD with that pain. So next point, also helps stop intruding slash interrupting thoughts. Common ADHD especially inattentive ADHD problem. There are certain strains that just relax the mind and helps you kind of put thoughts in their place and sort of think more fluid and in a relaxed manner as opposed to, okay, whatever thought gets my attention first, that's what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say out loud or that's what I'm going to go with. So the next point, cannabis also helps with rejection sensitive dysphoria that's very important due to the raising of the reward system and also the increase in the cb1 and cb2 receptors sometimes it can mellow us out to we're not going to be feeling too bad 
Whereas otherwise with ADHD, we'd be feeling pretty harsh if something happened to us, if we felt like we let someone down or someone rejected us. Rejection sensitive dysphoria is a huge thing with ADHD that a lot of people with ADHD have. I have a whole video on rejection sensitive dysphoria that you might want to check out because it's a big deal and that stops us from doing a lot of things that we otherwise would be doing and perhaps having a good time and connecting with more people. So cannabis seems to help out with that from what some people have said. The next point, cannabis helps with mood issues, sleep and nausea. A lot of people with ADHD have issues of irritability, with melancholy and sadness and dysthymia, i.e. reoccurring depression or just negative uh, sentimental thought processes. So cannabis can definitely help out with that. It can help you out with mood issues and can help mellow the intensity. It can also help with sleep. It can also help with nausea. Granted, different strains are required for some of these things. Uh, there's not really a all-in-one type of strain. I'm sure there are strains that have a different variety of things they help out with, but usually speaking, yeah, different strains are going to help out with uh, some of these issues. So, moving along, cannabis also helps with motivation. Interesting to note, since for many years people thought that cannabis took away motivation from people, but interestingly enough, it can have the exact opposite effect depending on what you take if some some strains can get your couch locked or you're not going to want to leave your chair your bed or your couch all day you're going to be watching movies or just kind of mellowing out and doing like and then not getting what you want to get done done so we got to watch out so going on to the next point we see that cannabis helps with seeing the bigger picture some people with adhd report that once they take cannabis that they have an easier time seeing the bigger picture on what they're working on or, or what the situation they're in has. That they don't feel overwhelmed by the immediacy of what's going on or a consequence that might occur. Rather, they see the bigger implication of the overall scenario and they can be like, well, well you know what? Rather than getting anxious and really worried I can come up with, with a system or I can help myself or the individual or company or group, whatever it is. I can come up with a better scenario in order to help myself out with that. So seeing the bigger picture, perhaps due, due to increase in the reward system in different parts of neurochemistry, can help some people with ADHD that take cannabis, can help them see the bigger picture. So let's take a look at the THC neurochemistry and see what happens in the brain when you consume cannabis. THC neurochemistry. The, presynapt the presynaptic localization of CB1 receptors suggests a role for cannabinoids in modulating the release of neurotransmitters from axon terminals. And this has been confirmed by a substantial body of experimental data. Early reports show that CBD, that's the psychoactive compound in cannabis, THC inhibited acetylcholine release from electronically stimulated guinea pig ileum. So, similar inhibitory effects of THC and other cannabinoids on the release of a variety of neurotransmitters from CNS neurons, CNS meaning the central nervous system, have been observed in many subsequent studies. Interesting to note that the neurotransmitters involved include L-glutamate, GABA, noradrenaline, dopamine, 5-HTP, and acetylcholine. So those neurotransmitters are, effect are affected. Interesting to note that a lot of these neurotransmitters have to do with um, relaxing the body. One more time. The neurotransmitters involved include L-glutamate, GABA, noradrenaline, dopamine, 5-HTP, which eventually becomes serotonin, and acetylcholine. Now, interesting to note, when you have ADHD, there is an issue with a lot of these. I take a supplement for help with a majority of these because these neurotransmitters, interestingly enough, are low in people with ADHD from what research has shown. For example... For acetylcholine, I take R-alpha lipoic acid. For dopamine and for norepinephrine, known as noradrenaline in this case, I take N-acetyltyrosine. For 5-HTP, which eventually becomes serotonin, I take both 
L-theanine and L-tryptophan. And I get my help uh, with GABA from taking B12. Yes, those neurotransmitters, majority of those issues with lower levels when you have ADHD. So it's, it's, it's interesting to note that. There will be a link of the study down below if you want to check it out a bit more. So let's go through a, a common list of terms that we need to know when it comes to cannabis and how you consume it, what are the, what are the different strains, what are the different kinds, what, what should you look for. And then we're going to talk about the uh, negative side effects, meaning the, uh, yeah, the symptoms that are going to be of detriment or might be of detriment. So... So for those of you who um, have been in the uh, cannabis community for a number of years or who know your stuff, this might be uh, just a review. But for those of you who are new and are not sure, this is going to be, yeah, uh, like cannabis 101. So let's dive into it. Now, we have three different types of types of cannabis. We have first the sativa. Now, sativas are known for their head high. An invigorating, energizing effect that can help reduce anxiety or stress and increase creativity and focus. Sativas are much more in the much more in the head and in the mind, and they're very uplifting, and they can be very helpful for those people who need uh, pick me up, who need uh, a lessening of, of anxiety. So, for those who have inattentive ADHD, yeah, there's um, some benefit that can come from taking a sativa. And now we look at the indica. Now, indicas are typically associated with full body effects such as increasing deep relaxation and reducing insomnia. Indicas are usually or can can be really uh, couch lock inducing for some people. Couch lock meaning that you're just not going to want to get up from the couch or the lazy boy chair, if you will. And it's just, it's that class, classic uh, stoner stereotype of we're just going to be sitting there with this goofy look on your face relaxed. So, indicas are really good for pain and really good for helping uh, sleep. So, those with hyperactive ADHD or who are more on the hyperactive side uh, might benefit from taking an indica. Given an indica to someone who has inattentive ADHD throughout the day might not be the best idea because those of us with inattentive ADHD already kind of feel just mellowed and just lack energy. So, yeah, might not be the best thing to give something that might make that person even more mellow and just kind of because then the couch lock is going to be there all day, perhaps. So we got to watch out. And third one, hybrid. It's a mixture of both. And the ratios vary among strains and amongst the different growers slash companies that grow it. So there's some strains that have a bit both of sativa and indica. There's some strains that have more sativa and less indica and then vice versa, more indica, less sativa. So the ratio is going to vary sometimes even within the same strain of cannabis. So one's got to watch out. Go with a company that you trust and find out whether they're indoor or outdoor grown. That can make a difference sometimes. So moving along, another important thing to know is the terpines of the different strains. Interesting to know, terpines are involved in all sorts of things out in nature. Let's see exactly what terpines do and what they are. Terpines are another naturally occurring compound in the cannabis plant. The terpines directly affect the plant's smell. They may also influence the effects produced by specific strains. So different strains are going to have different smells and they're going to kind of give off uh, some, perhaps even a different taste, if you will. So these certain smells can be a benefit from some people. Everyone has their biologically preferred uh, terpine. I don't know if some of you knew that or not. So it's important to figure that out. Now there's a terpine chart I'm going to put up. And you can also research this more online. So if you look at the chart here, common terpines and benefits, for instance, uh, we look at, we look at, let's jump on down to the uh, uh, lemonine or lemonin. And we see that the aroma is that of lemon and orange. We see the effects as elevating stress relieving. And we see the health benefits of antidepressant, antifungal. Also found in citrus rinds and peppermints, 
And strands, we see sour diesel and train wreck. Now, why did I jump down all the way to lemonine? Lemonine. <laughs> why did I jump down to that one? I've noticed in most uh, pages, if you do a quick Google search and you talk about different strains, or you put a question asking which strains are most helpful for ADHD, some of the research that I've seen is that the strain sour diesel seems to be really helpful for helping the mind focus and keep the mind at ease. So interesting to know because sour diesel it has a very lemony lime sort of smell to it um, some, and it also has a diesel-esque sort of smell to it so interesting to note that that strain is included in the top five top 10 most recommended strains for adhd so it can be taken mind you cannabis can be consumed through um edibles you can eat cannabis if the thc of the strain is put into food of all different sorts and these days they have extracted that and you can put it into any sort of food really and you can also smoke it the classic way um, and you can also use a water pipe that is going to be much more helpful and beneficial in keeping your lungs safer rather than the more traditional way of rolling one up so if you want to be on the safer side i'd recommend a water pipe that has a perk filtration system that will keep the toxins at bay, if you will, and it will be less harsh on the throat. So that's just a different option. I would recommend for you to do research if you plan on consuming cannabis, uh, because taking it in, taking cannabis in, if you decide to smoke it rather, uh, can be harmful to the throat um, if you do it through different means. So you can do it through a piece, you can do it through a pipe, you can do it through uh, rolling papers. There's different ways of doing it. So uh, the best way to keep your throat safe from what I've seen and what from others have said in some forums is through a water pipe. So that's what I'm telling you guys here. Water pipe, i.e. bong, just it's through a water filtration system with a perk system that'll help keep the toxins out and help keep your throat, your esophagus and all that good stuff safer. So. Do your HW and go research that a bit more if you plan on taking it. Now, I want to go back to talking about sour diesel for a bit. Let's take a gander. Sour diesel. Users of this strain adore sour diesel for its multi-purpose effects. You get to enjoy uplifting energy, creativity, and focus all rolled into one. While sour diesel isn't the most focused enhancing strain around, it allows you to get on with your day just fine with a slight buzz in the back of your head and thanks to the sativa dominant effects. With a THC content reaching up to 26%, sour diesel is not a strain to mess around with. Make sure to go low and slow. A little goes a long way with this strain. Take too much and you can find yourself much too euphoric to achieve anything. So, sour diesel, as I mentioned before, it's in the top recommended strains for cannabis. If you do a Google search and just look around, and it's because of what it does to the mind and the ease it brings to the mind. It gives the energy to the mind and to the body, but it helps relax at the same time, which is a lot of the time what we need a sense of relaxation and a focus and to feel good enough to complete something without feeling uncomfortable to the point of then getting distracted by that uncomfortability, thus having to do something else in order to compensate for feeling uncomfortable. So, interesting to know. You might want to research that a little bit more. There's another strain by the name of Super Sour Diesel that includes, includes a haze in there, particularly Super Silver Haze. Super Silver Haze is really relaxing for the mind similar to Purple Haze, sung by the infamous uh, Jimi Hendrix, but this strain's a little different. So, Super Silver Haze, it helps you kind of stay in your mind, but relax the mind at the same time. A Sour Diesel brings you out, out, out of that more so. So it's a nice balance of keeping the mind relaxed, but being able to go out and about uh, with your body and have that energy you need, but in a focused manner, so. I've noticed some forums and some people have spoken about that. Interestingly enough, Mike Tyson has his own brand of Super Sour Diesel. So, um, some people, what they do, and what I've seen in some forums discussed that's quite helpful, is that they take Super Silver Haze, they take a certain amount of it, and then they'll take a slight little bit of Sour Diesel afterwards to balance it out. Because sometimes Super Sour Diesel can be a little much. 
Both of these strands, by the way, are nothing to mess with. You want to start low if you're uh, planning on doing that because it can be a bit overwhelming from what the different forums and the different things I've read have stated. So one needs to watch out. Now you need to look at the THC amount in the containers of, of the cannabis that you get. If the THC is higher than the mid twenties, like 25% and higher, that's going to be pretty high up. So a little is going to go a long way. You're not going to need to take a bunch of that stuff. So I advise you to please be careful. Once you consume a strain, it takes sometimes 10 minutes plus in order to feel it. You don't want to do the classic thing of you take a little bit and you're like, oh, I don't feel anything. And then 10, 15 minutes later, <laughs> it comes on kicking really hard. So what some people do, since they don't feel anything the first two minutes, they take more afterwards. And then once the strain kicks in fully, you might be zonked. You might get anxious, paranoid. And you don't want that, so you want to be careful not to consume too much. Start off a little bit, give it uh, 20, 30 minutes or so, and see where you're at and see how the ADHD symptoms are feeling. Are you getting help from it? Is it worse? So, And there are also supplements that can kind of help you get out of the effects of that if you really need the help as well. So start off small and don't overdo it. And edibles are a whole other ballpark. Edibles are... When you put cannabis THC um, within uh, something you can eat, like a cookie or a snack or something of the sort, be very careful because when you consume uh, edibles or things that have cannabis in them, they hit your body in a much more different way that's much more profound and can feel almost borderline psychedelic. So be very careful because some people can get very anxious with that. So you don't want to become very anxious. So uh, be cautious don't eat too much if you plan on eating an edible and if you plan on consuming it through um smoking it rather be very careful to start at a low dosage and do not consume too much of it at first see how your body and mind react and uh, approach it cautiously i would recommend for you to be careful though because there are certain strains that are going to blur how your your mind views and thinks of stuff now, research has also shown that people with ADHD can potentially become addicted to cannabis, especially if they're not taking anything else to help the ADHD because they become dependent on it. And this can, unfortunately, for some people of certain cognitive functions, it can also blindside them. So they're not aware of the negative implications of what's going down with them. So we need to be very careful and monitor our behavior, monitor our thoughts, and how often or how much we consume of this. It's very important. You don't want to have something that can potentially help you be a detriment to you because a lot of people that have ADHD have a very addictive personality. So this is very dangerous. So if you feel you have issues with that, perhaps this might not be for you. So proceed with caution, keep a journal. I would highly recommend if you consider doing this to keep a journal on what you improved with, uh, what ADHD symptoms have been helped out, and what ADHD symptoms have been made worse. So there's all sorts of charts out there. There's a helpful website for those of you who want to see called Leafly, that's L-E-A-F-L-Y.com. And you can see the different strains and what they help people out with. Because those of us with ADHD, we have similar difficulties, but we also have very different different difficulties. So you might want to check that out and see if a certain strain works for you. Granted, just to know that the strain soup the strain sour diesel sour diesel. Granted, just so you know, the strain sour diesel has really been a common one that's recommended for ADHD. So if you haven't tried it and you plan on trying it, that might be something you might want to try out. Whether it's in flower form or whether you get it in a um, in vape concentrate form. There's a lot more high-end uh, vaporizers out there that if you're going to use a vaporizer or a vape pen rather, um, get one that is of higher quality. You don't want to get a cheap quality one because that can do your lungs a lot of damage. So the cheap end ones, research has shown, are not really good for you. And the government is already cracking down on those really low-end ones. So this is your body. This is um, your life. You want to take care of yourself. So use stuff of quality if you plan on using them.
Now, what are the negative effects of cannabis? Tetrahydrocannabinol, THC, one of cannabis active compounds, inhibits neural connections and effectively slows the brain's signaling process. THC also affects the brain's dendrite architecture, which controls processing, learning, and the overall health of the brain. Science has not yet fully determined whether THC's effects are reversible. Some parts of the brain show healthy neural growth after cannabis use stops, but others do not. Short-term and long-term cannabis use also impairs motivation. It's a hampering effect. Next point, also memory, especially in people under 25, by altering the function of the hippocampus and orbital frontal cortex where much of memory is processed. Also issues with performance on complicated task performance with many executive steps. Studies have shown, for example, that driving ability, even while not under the influence, can be impaired in regular uh, marijuana users. So... Going along, cannabis use may also lead to the following health-related impairments. Chronic bronchitis, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, emphysema, cannabinoid hypermesis syndrome, characterized by severe bouts of vomiting and dehydration, and also elevated resting heart rate. So those are quite a bit of negative implications, but... We have to understand and notice that some of these implications and some of these studies have been taken from people who perhaps have not fully uh, taken into consideration what we've spoken about here. So if you use certain means to consume cannabis, it can really mess up your throat, which can cause issues with the bronchitis. If you consume too much cannabis, it can definitely impair your memory and your thought processing. And um, I know many individuals who consumed quite a bit of cannabis growing up when they were teenagers, and it's impaired their memory and their function of thinking. So what the research has shown is that if you consume quite a bit of cannabis, especially before the age of 16 or before uh, your mid-20s when your prefrontal cortex is developing, Consuming large amounts of cannabis is going to definitely hamper and cause a lot of problems with that. It's going to elongate the maturation of the prefrontal cortex, and it's going to give other issues as well. So we need to be careful not to consume such a high amount if you plan on doing so, especially if you're young. Now, back in the day, back when I was a teenager, people would only, you know, consume Cannabis, you know, probably maybe once or twice a month or perhaps just on weekends or whatever, or before a concert or gig happened. People usually drank and, you know, had cannabis like out and about at the backyard gigs or the venues. You guys know the ordeal. Anyway, so if you have a son or daughter that's just doing that every once in a while, you know, well, that's one thing. We got to, you know, watch out and monitor that and make sure it doesn't get out of control Or if you don't want your kids doing that, well, that's up to you as a parent. You got to stop them, do your thing. But understand that if it's just every once on the blue moon, it's not going to really do the substantial amount of damage like as previously thought. Now, what ends up happening when that damage could arise is if you have a son or daughter who's consuming cannabis on a daily basis or on a weekly basis and consumes a lot of it especially before the age of 16 and before the prefrontal cortex and different parts of the brain are maturing because that can hamper that and that can really regress that and that can leave those areas permanently damaged for some people. Unfortunately, I know some people when they were teenagers would consume so much of it that now when they're older, they have such a hard time processing things. So for those of us who are 25 and older, well, our parts, those parts of our brain are already in or entering their final stages of maturation. It, it's thought that in the late 20s, the prefrontal cortex of the brain reaches maturity. So at that point, it's a different story. I'm not saying to go out and just get stoned completely, but we still need to watch out for that. But with cannabis, if you plan on using it, treat it as a supplement.
if it's another plant that can help out your conditions of ADHD. For some of us it can, and for some of us it can't. So it depends on who you are. So keep in mind that these days, the different strains that are grown, the THC levels are higher than they've ever been. So a little can go a long way. You might not even need to consume all that much. You can also have it in edible form, or you can also use a vape, a vape pen that literally looks like a flash drive these days and uh, just have that and, you know, just take a little something and then you'll be uh, good to go for some people. So we need to watch out though. We need to understand the potential danger that can come with doing this in excess and doing too much of this when we're younger. If we have kids or family members or friends who are taking this when they're younger, because they can really mess up their thinking and mental processing for the rest of their life if they do too much of it at a younger age. So that's what I've seen that the research has said. I've spoken about this with other colleagues and this has been a topic in uh, my undergrad and sometimes even, uh, even during grad school as well. So it's something to be mindful about. You know your body, you know your brain, but at the same time, like with anything else, talk to your healthcare provider or professional and see what's up. You can contain, you can obtain cannabis from your local dispensary. If cannabis is legalized in your state or in whatever part of the world that you're in, you go to your local dispensary. Here in the U.S., you have to be 21 or older, and that's basically it. You don't no longer have to go to the town drug dealer a couple of blocks down from the house in the shady part of the city anymore. No, you can just go to a dispensary where it's legal. You know, you just have to bring your ID and be 21 or older. And they have uh, different strains and they have all sorts of different concoctions of CBD and of cannabis and THC itself. So there's so much variety now. Since the legalization of the process, there's so many ways to take uh, CBD, THC, and cannabis in. So you're not really just left at the option of rolling one up anymore. There's so many other more effective ways of taking this. But with great power comes great responsibility. So if you decide to take that, for your ADHD, you got to be careful. If you start noticing some of these negative side effects and they start getting pretty big and start becoming a big problem, then this might not be for you. But I wanted to share this video just to some people, because there's a lot of people I've noticed with ADHD that talk about this. So I figure why not make a video and talk to you guys about CBD oil and cannabis. So for myself, CBD oil has been of major benefit. So I wanted to talk about it and make this video and also talk about cannabis because there's a lot of people with ADHD that want to know what's up and how it can help. It can be helpful, but it can also be damaging under the wrong circumstances. So like with anything else, moderation and with great power comes a great responsibility. So I hope this video was helpful to you and I hope it brought some insight and I hope that you can monitor your behavior and take the steps needed to do what you need to do in order to help you become the best you you can be. Be responsible and do the research, folks. And you should be all right. Have a nice day and hope to see you around another ADHD video by Wilhelm. This is Wilhelm, your ADHD comrade, over and out.